Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys an update on my backyard pond, an update on the fish that I bought for it at the Central Florida Koi Show months ago, and also on the little bull pond that's here in my patio. So let's go take a look at the Joaquins first. I wanna show you guys how they're doing. You won't be able to see too much because they're actually out here in the side of my house in a 600 gallon blue poly tub, but you can catch little glimpses of them here and there. And uh, there is a little bit of green water in this tub. Green water is suspended algae that is suspended in the water and it's actually not bad for the fish at all. A lot of fish keepers, especially goldfish keepers in particular, try their hardest to cultivate green water in their aquariums or fish tubs because it helps with the health of the fish and it helps them grow. I'm gonna take this off so you guys can see them a little bit better. So yeah, it's not really that green right now. Most of the color that you're seeing is from algae growing on the sides and bottom of this tub. And that's because I did a water change yesterday. Come on guys. So yeah, basically about the green water, while it doesn't always look the best aesthetically and like algae growing on the sides of tanks and tubs doesn't really look that great either to our human eyes. But fish, I mean, it's a, it's a naturally occurring thing and it's actually good for the water because it can help clean the water and the fish even nibble on it and graze on it. So algae is not usually a bad thing. The only thing is if you have really, really dark green water that you can't even see through at all, you will want to increase aeration overnight because as soon as it gets dark, that algae, instead of producing oxygen, it starts using oxygen. So it can cause oxygen depletion in the water overnight which can cause all of your fish, it can cause a massive die off for your fish. So just something to be aware of. Let me pull some of them out for you just so you guys can see them a little better. Here's one of the Watanai. As you can see, it's a long bodied goldfish that has a double tail, but the tail, both of the tail lobes are really, really long. So originally this goldfish type was created by crossing the Joaquin with the long tailed Ryukin and it produced a fish a lot like this. Here's one of the Joaquins, <laughs> feisty little guy. This one is mostly white and it has kind of an asymmetrical red-orange pattern on it with red fins. A lot of times with goldfish, the white areas on them can get kind of yellowed and that can either be from eating too much algae or maybe it's just the way the fish is genetically. And it also happens more frequently to older fish, but the white on this one is super, super clean. This one is my favorite of all the Joaquins. I just love that color pattern. It just seems like so classic to me with how symmetrical it is, except it does have like one little white spot in the red that technically shouldn't be there for it to be like a perfect color pattern. But again, the whites on this fish are so clean. Who else can we look at? This, I don't think we'll be able to catch submarine. Oh, here's my other favorite Joaquin. Look at this one. Isn't that just gorgeous? Such a nice fish. Submarine, where are you? Oh, there he is. Let's see if I can catch Submarine. <gasps> I got him! As you can see, he just has a single tail. So that's what we call a common goldfish, or also known as a hibuna. A lot of people like to use the word hibuna because it makes them sound a little bit more fancy than just saying common goldfish. Because, I mean, while they're common goldfish they're they're actually really awesome and beautiful in their own way here he is from the side you can see he's just got a really classic streamlined carp fish body shape nothing too crazy about that and then a single tail now the interesting thing about this little guy and why Chris named him submarine is because he you see his dorsal fin there well then in between the dorsal fin and the tail fin he has an extra little tiny piece of fin that sticks up. <laughs> so just like a tiny little birth defect that's obviously not that big of a deal because he's just a pet fish to me and I really don't care but kind of makes him a little more interesting. You're so cute. I really want to move you into the fish room. I think you should be in the fish room. A lot of people ask what do goldfish feel like when you hold them underwater 
and they feel really, really soft, like silky, smooth, and soft. Especially their little face when they bump into you with their mouth, it just feels really soft. They're so cute. Okay, I'll let you go. Bye-bye. Ooh, I caught a few this time. Here is my all red Joaquin. When I was picking them out, I knew I wanted to have at least one that was completely all red. So there you have it. And then two, uh, oh no, one little Joaquin and then one Watanai. So you can see the difference there side by side if they would ever stop moving. But the Watanai is in the middle. That one has by far a much, much longer tail than the other ones. I just love these guys. They're so cute. So cute. I really need to move some of you guys into the fish room. Here's the Watanai. See that long, pretty tail? I think what I'll do is I'll move like a couple of the Watanai and a couple of the Joaquins and then submarine into one of the tanks in the fish room. So there they are. As you can see, they're doing well. And um, I'm just really looking forward to getting some of them moved into the fish room. And I'll tell you guys about my plans for the rest of them because my plans have changed since I first got them four months ago. And I'll tell you why. I have not moved them into the pond for a couple of reasons. Now the pond is designed with a skimmer. This means that the water comes down from the waterfall and then it gets sucked into a little hole where there's a skimmer box with a pump inside of it that's drawing the water in and then pushing it back around to go down the waterfall again. It was not really designed with any kind of cover over the skimmer box though. I think this is normal for ponds, but it just has a flap that opens and closes to let the water come in and it really doesn't have any way to catch or filter out things from getting into the skimmer box by accident. Now a couple of months ago I put Submarine in the pond as a test to see if he would do well and then after that if he did do well I was going to add some more of the fish into the pond but he kept getting stuck in the skimmer box over and over and over again. I don't know if it was on purpose or if he got sucked in. I tend to think it was on purpose because he is a strong fish. He's a good swimmer, so he could avoid the current of getting sucked in if he wanted to. I think he was going in there out of curiosity, honestly, but he kept going in there and I kept having to rescue him. This happened like three times in a row all on the same day, so I was like, okay. I need to rethink this plan a little bit because obviously this is not a suitable environment for the fish as it is. You have to understand that inside the skimmer box is a really powerful current. It's kind of like a whirlpool in there, honestly. The water is getting stirred up really quickly and so he couldn't get back out once he got himself stuck into the skimmer box and he was getting kind of beaten up by, by the current, just getting tumbled around in there. So it wasn't a safe place for him, certainly not for the other fish that aren't even as good of swimmers as him. So I put him back in the 600 gallon tub and rethought my plan. After that, I went to Home Depot and I got a little piece of metal screen. I think it's called a paint screen. I'm not entirely sure, pardon my ignorance, but I'm not entirely sure what it's actually supposed to be used for. So now there's a metal grate in front of the skimmer box and nothing that's larger than the little holes in the metal grate can fit through and get into the skimmer box, which is really nice and it solves that problem. So I had the grate installed. I thought everything would be fine to start adding some fish. And then a couple days later, I woke up to kind of a disaster in the pond area. Let me show you guys what happened. I woke up to some weirdness out in my backyard, especially at the pond this morning. And the only thing I can think is maybe raccoons, because I have noticed raccoons in my yard before, and it seems like they would do shenanigans like this. They had this alligator head decoy floating in my pond, and it was weighted down. The string was like placed under a medium-sized rock so that it was weighted down and would stay in one place in the pond. And that's been dragged out of the pond and it's way over here upside down. So that's the first thing I noticed. And then the second thing I noticed was this plant pot way over there. It used to be on the other side of the fish room there. And it got dragged way out here and put perfectly upright in the middle of the backyard. And I came over to the pond and I noticed this big clump of green string algae. This was actually inside the pond growing in the water like attached to the rocks and stuff and there's just this huge clump that's been dragged out and then one of my creeping jenny plants has been uprooted you can see the dirt here and the roots so it was planted but something or someone ripped it out of the ground 
in a big chunk and just left it there. So that means that whatever did this was like waiting around inside the pond itself. And that makes me really nervous as far as putting fish in here. If something waded into the pond without even the attraction of fish being in there for them to eat, they're definitely gonna wait in there when there's fish in there, grab the fish, kill them and eat them, so. Now I'm really rethinking putting fish in here. I mean, I knew that predation would be a risk from the beginning, but I am home all day, every day, so I'm not as worried about like herons and stuff as I am about raccoons. Raccoons were always my first concern, and now that my fears have been validated like that, it's just like, okay, I can't put fish in here. I don't want to. So it's not gonna be a fish pond, but the cool thing is, having this pond has attracted a lot of different species into my yard. For example, I see a lot more dragonflies and butterflies now than I ever did in the past, especially dragonflies. And frogs, the frogs are the most exciting part to me because you guys know I love amphibians. I have some pet frogs of my own and I've always loved frogs. They're like my second favorite animal next to well, goldfish and cats, I guess, so my third favorite animal. But frogs are awesome, and now every night there's like a million frogs calling out at the pond. It's really, really cool. I tried to get some audio and video, but it might be too dark, of the frogs calling, so I'll insert that now so you guys can hear it. The frogs you heard calling are Cuban tree frogs. They are actually invasive here in the state of Florida. They're not supposed to be here and they are pretty detrimental to wildlife because they outcompete native frogs for food and the native frogs end up not doing as well, kind of dying off and the Cuban tree frogs just really come in and take over. It's a really common problem in Florida. We have a lot of invasive species here that aren't supposed to be here, but they come from other tropical climates in the world and Florida is basically tropical, so they can actually survive and do really well here. So I know that it's not good to have these frogs here, but darn it, they're just so cute. <laughs> But the cool thing is there's also a large leopard frog that's been living in the pond too. It's a southern leopard frog and those actually are native to Florida. So it really makes my heart happy to know that I'm providing a happy little ecosystem for a native Florida frog. I think it's just so cool. There are also tons of tadpoles in the pond. I have always loved tadpoles. I Every time I would go like hiking or something and there would be a body of water, I'd get so excited about looking for tadpoles and frogs. And now all I have to do is go to my backyard and I see tons of tadpoles. So it's been really exciting and really cool for me to watch them sprout legs and do their little things in there. I think they're also vegetarian, so there actually is a lot of green string algae in the pond right now, which I'm annoyed with, but the tadpoles probably like. I see them eating it all the time, so it is what it is, you know? It's an ecosystem. It's, it's doing its own little thing that it wants to do. I think what we should do in this video is I should try to catch some of the tadpoles. I have a net with me and a little clear viewing container so we can get a closer look at them. I've never actually done this on my own yet, so I don't know if these tadpoles are from the southern leopard frog or from the Cuban tree frogs. And I don't, I'm not very good at identifying tadpoles to begin with, so I may not even be able to figure it out once we look at them more closely, but I just think it'll be fun anyways to get a closer look at them. I'll try to find the one I saw the other day that actually sprouted back legs already, and we'll get a few different sizes so you guys can check them out with me. Here's how the pond is looking today. The plants are growing in super well, except at the moment, because it's the middle of the day, 
and the sun is really intense right now, this guy right here, this one always gets wilty like that in the middle of the day and then at night it perks back up again. It just doesn't like how intense the sun gets at midday here. But the rest of the plants are doing super well. This one is just taking over. I don't know what this is. If anyone can identify this, I'd be really interested to know what it is. But I like it, but man, does it really take over. So it's spreading. And this little piece over here was a smaller chunk that I actually ripped off of this plant because I wanted it to like fill out more evenly instead of just in that one little spot there. The waterfall is looking good. There is a lot of algae though. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but I'm having a big problem in here with string algae, like a big problem. I recently pulled all of it out that I could like two days ago. So it doesn't look that bad right now, but it gets really bad. And it's just because this part of the yard gets full direct sunlight for pretty much the entire day. Here we go. See what I mean? Like it just keeps on going forever. So you can never get all of it. And it's just all over right here. It's all stuck in the rocks. So that's kind of annoying, but like I said, I mean the tadpoles do eat it, so I don't want to take all of it out. Oh, do you guys like my new pet? <laughs> this is Red the Alligator. Isn't he cute? I got this to scare my mom when she came to visit because my mom absolutely hates alligators with a passion because she's scared of them because they, I mean, they can eat people if they want, which they sometimes do, so. I guess her her hatred is founded somewhat. But I just think it's funny how much she hates them and she's always asking me if I ever see alligators in my yard and I'm like, mom, no. <laughs> just because I live in Florida doesn't mean there's all these alligators in my yard at all times. So I thought it would be funny to get this alligator pond decoy and scare her with it when she came to visit. And actually I ended up scaring my sister more than it scared my mom, which was kind of funny. Oh my gosh, Jenny, that scared the crap. What? Yeah, let's go look at it a little closer. What do you mean? Let's go look at the pond a little closer. What do you think there's something in it? What do you... Yeah, Where? There's a lizard or something. A lizard? <laughs> what is it? Where is it? Oh, is that <laughs> Gross! Why would you put that in there? I don't know if this actually does anything for predator control. Probably not, honestly, but he's my little pet. I just like having it. This is a new plant. This is a pitcher plant that Chris got from the Orlando Repticon that we went to, and it has grown so much. It's like doubled in size. This thing is really awesome. It's so bright. Let's try to catch some of these tadpoles. Here's one with legs. <gasps> Got him! There's a tadpole nibbling on my foot. Oh my god, tickles. All right, I caught a whole bunch. caught like 30 tadpoles here and they all look like they're the same species to me and I'm pretty sure they're gonna be southern leopard frog tadpoles. I found this article online from the United States Geological Survey that's all about tadpoles of the southeastern United States coastal plain. Southern leopard frog, there you are. <gasps> look at them! Look, that's exactly what these are. Oh, that's awesome, you guys. That means I have tadpoles 
from a native species. I have a Florida native species reproducing in my ornamental pond. That is so cool. They even have the Cuban tree frog in here even though it's an invasive non-native species. But it gives me something to compare the tadpoles to. Because a key feature for identification is a pale yellow stripe on either side of the head that stretches from the nostril to the eye. I am not seeing that any of them have that pale yellow stripe. These guys are so cute. I really hope I don't miss it when they finally start emerging from the pond as little froglets. So I'm not planning on putting any of my goldfish in the pond as I had originally planned, which I'm okay with because I'm really loving having it be a frog and tadpole pond right now. So with the fish that I have that I originally got for the pond, I think I'm going to bring some of them inside to the fish room. I'm still getting four more 120 gallon aquariums from Custom Aquariums and I'm planning on putting all different varieties of goldfish in them and kind of separating them out based on their varieties. So I do have room in the fish room for some of those fish that I had for the pond, but not all of them, because those tanks are already gonna be taken up by other varieties of goldfish. So I think I'm gonna keep the ones that stand out to me the most, like submarine, of course, and probably the Watanais and a few of the Joaquins that I like the best and then probably find new homes for the other ones. Although, I don't know, that's such a tough decision because honestly at this point I'm attached to all of them. <laughs> I actually might just end up leaving them in that blue tub. And as you guys know, eventually I'm gonna be getting a really big, about 2,000 gallon glass aquarium from Custom Aquariums for the middle of the fish room. So, and I'm planning on putting just two koi in there. But I think I'll be able to squeeze in some of the Joaquins into that aquarium with the koi so that's probably what I'll end up doing but for now I'm not 100% decided yet but I just thought I'd give you guys an update on them anyways because you guys have been asking and it's been a long time since you've seen them. I'm also going to show you guys the patio bull pond that I have out here in my patio really quick. Here's how the patio bull pond is looking today. Not looking the greatest just because the plants really didn't do well in my research on how to pot pond plants. I found that you should add uh, half pure clay kitty litter to half topsoil, but I really don't think that these particular plants appreciated that situation very much because look at them. I have said it before, but I do not have a green thumb, so <sighs> what can you do? But the mollies in here are doing really good. There's my favorite right now, right here. He's a really pretty liar tail molly. Look at this, even the lily pads aren't doing well. That's so disappointing because I really love this lily. I think maybe what I'll do is, oh look, you aren't even attached. I think maybe what I'll do is put this lily in the bigger pond and see if it does better out there. I'm not sure if the pest snails are eating the leaves. Something is clearly eating the leaves, but the mollies are doing good. All of the adults are this like pretty bright orange color so you can see them in here, but all the babies turned out mostly like dark blackish brownish. Here's a newer baby, but see how all the babies, they're just turning out black, so you really can't see how many fish are in here because <laughs> they blend right in. Look at this one. This was... Oh, he got away. That was one of the Dalmatian mollies, but he turned all black. All right, I caught one. Here's one of the bigger babies. This is one of the original babies. Oh, and it just escaped. But you guys can see how they're all turning out dark. So it's really hard to tell even how many babies are in here. There's the patio pond. There's a the little gimme gim. Hi, Graham. So that's about it for the pond updates, guys. I think I answered all the questions I've been getting lately about all the various different ponds and pond fish. But if I missed anything, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section down below and I'll answer as many as I can. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, and until then, stay gold.